Hi, we're the MIGO Robotics team, and we'll be telling you a bit about our robot for the 2021 RoboSub competition. The story of the propulsion system starts with the battery. Here's a diagram dealing with the power handling of the AUV. We use a LiPo battery that is capable of producing high current. The high current path indicated now is connected to a customs kill switch and 30 amp fuses for the AUV safety. This path is composed of eight ESCs that are necessary to run the three phase motors for our thrusters. Just to add, the branch highlighted indicates our low current costly device path, which includes the DVL, NVIDIA Jetson compute node, IMU, and camera. We isolate this path from its high current counterpart by regulating it through a commercial automotive voltage regulator supplied by Minibox. In order to convert a desired force vector into low-level electrical signals, we use a two-stage script. First, it superimposes force vectors inputted in the cardinal directions into a 3D resultant, then uses a system of linear kinetic equations and empirically determined moments of inertia to map this resultant vector into pulse width modulation signals to be interpreted by our ESCs. We publish this information to Arduino-powered servos and thrusters. We use an Arduino because we want to ease the load on our NVIDIA Jetson, which is used to run ROS. Our AUV has four thrusters facing upwards and another four on each side of the system. We chose this orientation to maximize stability and to minimize the moments experienced by the vehicle when it's surging and heaving. For this year's AUV, the mechanical design of the main chassis housed one of our most noticeable changes. The octagonal design that we chose allows us to neatly align our mechanisms on flat panels all over the sides uh, while providing radial symmetry, which is really useful for some of the mechanisms that require multiple positions. Um, for example, some of the side panels allow us to uh, put on our uh, thrusters and some of them are used for our tor torpedo launchers, uh, while some are just there as side view panels for the internals. Uh, that being said, uh, easy access into the internals was something that was also heavily considered during the design of the chassis, and that can be seen uh, with our acrylic dome. Uh, for this dome, uh, we uh, focused on designing a covering for the vehicle that not only provides secure and strong shielding of the internal components from the water, but also um, us uh, hosting uh, slanted nuts that can be twisted to allow effortless access into the internal components uh, is something that we saw as really important to have uh, while troubleshooting our device. Due to the small size of our team, we've embodied the design philosophy that has emphasized simplicity and favored doing a smaller number of tasks. We believe this will help us increase the probability of success. Moreover, because we're currently in the process of building a new robot, we must choose between competing with our older tested robot or our newer prototype. Given that we haven't been able to test our newest system due to COVID-19 restrictions, we would have used our previous design if we were to compete in person this year. With that in mind, we now tell you a bit about our competition strategy for each of the tasks we chose to perform. The version of the gate task that we will be attempting will involve accepting a random starting direction based on the outcome of coin toss. Uh, we will submerge down to depth, orient ourselves towards the gate, and then surge through the gate. Following our general philosophy of keeping it simple, uh, we will uh, att be attempting a partial dead reckoning approach for this task. To ensure that the AUV submerges to the correct depth, we will be implementing a closed loop PID control uh, and hard coding the depth to be about 2.5 meters. The AUV is able to estimate its current state based on a pressure-based depth sensor. When the correct depth is reached, the IMU estimates the angle of the AUV and the PID controls are used to rotate the AUV to the required angle based on the result of the coin flip to align itself with the front of the gate. Uh, to go through the gate, the AUV will surge at a prescribed magnitude and amount of time, with these values being uh, determined by empirical testing. We plan on conducting pool testing and adjusting these hard-coded values accordingly. Coming in from the previous task, the AUV checks the downward-facing camera for part of the orange lane. If no lane is visible, it uses an IMU to perform a raster scan, moving in perpendicular directions for predetermined distances. 
Once the AUV detects the lane, it transitions into the lane detection state where it performs lane detection using a simple algorithm that incorporates OpenCV. For the pre-processing step, a Gaussian blur is applied, followed by an increase in the red channel which improves our contrast. A color mask is then applied to get a binary image so we know which parts of the image are orange and which are not. On these binary images, the algorithm finds contours and ensures that they are large enough to be the lane. If they are, canny edge detection is applied with the hue lens algorithm to find the lanes corresponding to the direction of the lane markers. The information relating to the orientation of these lanes is then published and then passed on to downstream nodes in the ROS network. The lane detector has been tested outside of water where it appears quite robust. We are assuming that the noise underwater will not hamper our detection process. Our procedure for the boy task is broken up into two parts, the approach and target identification. Upon achieving stable alignment with the lane, the AUV transitions to processing feed from the front camera. Color thresholding is then used to guide the AUV towards the target until it takes up a predetermined aspect ratio. With the boy in frame, an orb image classification algorithm picks up the scale and variant features and uses k-nearest neighbors to determine if the image on the boy is the target or not. Once it correctly identifies the target boy, it will search towards it at an empirically determined time to touch the boy and complete the task. Finally, we decided to reduce the last task to simply getting to the pinger and surfacing within the octagon. To move towards the pinger, we will use hydrophones. They are four piezoelectric sensors located on the side of the robot, which convert pressure waves from the pinger into voltage signals. We manipulate those signals using an in-house designed filtration board to isolate and amplify the known frequencies of the pinger. The processed signals from the four piezoelectric sensors are simultaneously digitized by four analog to digital converters on a Nucleo microprocessor which allows for high fidelity digitization of the signal. Once these signals are digitized, we will use the time difference of arrival to locate the position of the pinger relative to the robot. We will enable a PID controlling our yaw to orient ourselves towards the pinger. Once we are stably pointing towards the pinger, we will surge forward while keeping the PID on to keep ourselves going in the right direction. Once we surpass the pinger, we should have a very sudden change in the perceived angle with respect to the pinger. We can use that sudden change to deduce when we have surpassed the pinger and stop surging. We will stay motionless for a few readings to make sure that the pinger is indeed behind us. And once that is confirmed, we can simply turn off all motors and use our positive buoyancy to float back to the surface. Even though we did not manage to test this task, in the water to see how sensitive the robot should be to a change in angle to most accurately detect when it surpasses the pinger, we still managed to test the overarching logic. We were able to communicate clearly on different ROS topics, and our logic appears to be able to make the right decisions after we publish fake data on those different topics. We've discussed our propulsion system as well as our competition strategy for performing various tasks such as the gate task, lane detection, and the boy task. As we've mentioned in our introduction, our team is very small, and since we'd like everyone to contribute significantly, we chose to perform only a subset of those tasks, and opted for a simple, robust approach for every task. While doing so, we also ensure that our software is appropriately modularized, which makes it more extensible. This allows us to add functionality in the future as we perform more tasks. We also apply a similar mentality to our hardware by including only necessary components while ensuring the robot is open for expansion by making those components easily replaceable. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in person for RoboSub 2022.